So I substitute taught just twice in my life. And the second time really changed everything. So I'm in this high school classroom, and uh, I'm up there, and I'm trying to get everyone's attention, and I'm the sub, so they're just ready to completely eat me alive. And so I'm like, okay, um, hey, hey guys, uh, okay, uh, and so they're just not having it. And so I'm looking desperately around this room for anything, just anything that will help like, bring attention to me. And for whatever reason, it's there. I look over, and in the corner is a hula hoop. And I'm just like, yes. So I walk over silently, and I, I pick it up, and I just I start doing my thing. And I'm just like, what? No big deal. I'm hooping. And so all of a sudden, all these eyes are immediately on me, and I have everyone's attention. And that changed my life. So that's what I realized I wanted to do. I wanted to take something creative and teach students and find something that would unite everyone. And that's what I do uh, in volunteering throughout Lansing and at working at Reach Studio Arts Center is finding things that can unite people, um, whether that's a hula hoop, whether that's through using Etsy, uh, camera, filmmaking, um, even art, finding something that can take people and bring them together. And for me, that was actually photojournalism, and yes, that, that is me. Um, no, that's not what photojournalism looks like, but um, this is the only picture of me I could find with a camera. So uh, photojournalism actually led me to a really unlikely place uh, in 2009, and I began teaching a program that tried to reconnect students with kids that had parents or relatives that were incarcerated by writing letters. Um, here's, whoop, here's a letter from one of the students. Uh, it says, from Jaslyn, I love you, Mom. I'm in class, Mom. I miss you, Mom, very much. I love you too much. Write me back, Mom. It's beautiful. But in the first two weeks, I realized a really important lesson, and that was that students thought writing letters was about as exciting as staring at a giant brick wall. So I asked them, and I was like, what, what can I do to make this better? I, I, I'm failing. And what they said was, of course, anything technology, anything creative, anything with art. And so we did just that. We passed out digital cameras, and students started taking pictures. And their writing became better. We increased literacy skills. Um, this is an image from one of the students um, from a couple years ago. And the reason um, it's from a couple years ago is actually because I've seen this student quite regularly. Um, she just turned uh, 15, her father recently got out of prison, and she also just had a baby. And when I ran into her, I asked her, I was like, so what did you learn from the program? You know, what was it like for you? And what she said really surprised me. Um, she didn't say anything about photography was fun, photo class was great. Um, what she said was that um, the photo class really helped her learn about communication and what communicating um, with her mother and with her father was like. Uh, it helped her reflect on what um, it was like to have a father that was incarcerated, and it helped her formulate what she wanted to be in the future. She thought about how she could be a better daughter, how she could take those feelings of being genuinely angry and sometimes really quite depressed and take them and make them into something better. Now let's go back to me in front of the classroom for a second. So I'm up there and I just want to scream at these students and be like, education is fun. It's just, it's so fun. Learning is the best thing that you can do. And I would think that probably 90% of those students would think I was a complete liar, just complete. But um, this man, sorry, I'm failing with the clicker. Um, this man said that art is a lie that makes us realize the truth. And what I would like to argue is that it's not just art, it's creative thinking and technology that help us realize that truth, that education is fun. So an example, let's try one click at a time. So an example of that is uh, last spring and summer at REACH, we taught a program to the teens where they created small businesses. Uh, they did everything from uh, hand-dyeing fabric, 
uh, to making t-shirts, some students made ceramics, and they made businesses out of this. Um, one student even hand-painted shoes. I mean, aren't these beautiful? Those are phenomenal. And this student was really successful in particular um, because he utilized online media. So he made a blog to showcase his work so that he had a full gallery so everyone can see his work. Um, he made a Facebook page so people could constantly be updated on his thoughts, his creative musings, um, just anything quirky, a, a photograph. His latest shoes, those are his latest shoes for spring. Um, and he also sold his things on Etsy. And because he utilizes those technologies so successfully, um, it actually landed him a gallery show in Southern California. And now I've never had a gallery show in Southern California, um, <laughs> let alone when I was 17. I mean, 17. Uh, another example is right there um, of two students that banded together and they made a small business because they saw a problem. And it was that one student in particular had an uncle who was really, really ill with cancer, no insurance, mounting medical bills, and they wanted to solve that problem. So they couldn't really solve it, but what they did was over the course of a few months, they took together little bits of glass beads and tiny pods of wire, um, and they raised just under $300 to help pay these medical bills. It's phenomenal. So what did this do? By utilizing these creative thoughts and a little bit of technology, I mean, the students were incredibly engaged. I mean, it was their products. It was things that they were making. It also taught them something. It made these phrases that were completely foreign, like uh, supply and demand, economics, uh, what it means to have a fair market value tangible to them, because they had to use them in order to survive, in order to you know, get paid and realize that they weren't being undercut by somebody. Um, it taught them entrepreneurship and invention. Like I said, with the two girls that made that small business to help their uncle pay medical bills, I mean, it was, it was their future that they saw a problem and they could change it, and they did just that. In the future at REACH, we're actually embarking on a whole new experience, um, which is actually filmmaking. Uh, this spring and summer, we're launching our own television show. Uh, and it, it will be um, art and music based. It'll give the teens an enormous access to resources. Um, who in high school is learning filmmaking and film editing? I, I don't know, but our kids will. Um, and it will give them a newfound sense of history and culture and community because we're going to be recording local musicians, local artists, um, and showcasing their work and recording them more so um, in vacant properties throughout Lansing so they'll learn about how Lansing has grown and changed and moved and is adjusting for the future. So why is this important? Well, because we live in an extremely connected world, a world that demands us to be creative, to be scientific, to be able to communicate on numerous platforms and, and solve the economic crises in Michigan. And that is so heavy. It's so heavy. And if we don't help these students, they will feel lost and they will be left behind. And yes, this is intentionally left blank. Because back to photojournalism, so those are some of the greatest and also some of the darkest times of my life. I photographed homicide, suicide, and abuse. And I would say about 80% of those violent crimes were committed by students ages 15 to 25. And I, I wonder, I'm trying to keep it together, and I wonder what would have happened if those students had been able to use creativity to be given some form of technology that they'd never had before and to use those for some good. One of the darkest nights I hope I will ever have um, I actually photographed a double homicide committed by a 17-year-old boy. Now, I can't explain this silent numbness that hits you once you've seen something like that. But I can tell you that for me, I go into autopilot mode like a crazy person, and, and I'm just like, I need to go grocery shopping. So somewhere between the produce aisle and trying to find normalcy, I 
am in the toy department and I see this giant beautiful thing and I pick it up and there, after photographing a double homicide committed by a young boy, um, I'm hula hooping just like this and I'm laughing and I'm crying and I think it saved my life. So a week after that double homicide, I returned to the site. And this is the whole point and the whole reason that I got up here today. I met this man. This photograph is not important, but the story of the man is. So I, I met this man whose you know, two neighbors were just murdered less than a week ago. And he said that he was feeling blessed. I mean, he's just hanging out on a trampoline. It's hot pink, no big deal. It's a beautiful day. Um, and I would like to tell you all that you are wonderful, creative, intelligent, and inspiring human beings. And I'm so impressed by our ability to struggle, survive, and to find joy. We are the kind of people that can interact with teens and help them process those thoughts of having a father incarcerated and giving them the experience of taking pictures and learning from that how they want to be in the future, of hula hooping with a friend on a bad day, of giving teens the opportunity to create a small business and to raise funds for an uncle who has cancer, um, to do anything. We can do anything. And I would like to encourage you to share your creative thoughts, share your love of technology, and give them to students throughout Lansing. Be that cord, be the hula hoop um, that unites Lansing and resonates change. Thank you so much. Thank you.